We all know how Dave likes to make up words and phrases as if they're a real thing. Well, this week our bonehead is going after some bass with something called a slip a line rig. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. There we go. Man, look at these things. They never ever give up. This is just a little dude. Easy. In a land like no other, on a lake like you've never seen. Well, maybe you've seen lakes like this, but there is an angler so great, he once set the hook so hard he turned a small mouth into a large mouth. He can unscramble an egg. He made his first cast at the age of three and it landed yesterday. We join him to chronicle one day on one lake. This is Facts of Fishing, the show. Here we go. Welcome to Facts of Fishing, the show. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Abu Garcia for life. Yamaha, conquer water. Live target, lifelike lures. Action car and truck accessories, the right customer experience. Berkeley, catch more fish. And Phoenix Bass Boats, experience the Phoenix difference. so stuck in the new high-tech amazing things in fishing but the way we're gonna fish today is basically you know when I started you know not when I first got into fishing because when you first get into fishing I mean you throw the crap your dad tells you to throw or your mom ties on for you but once I started you know thinking I could come up with rigs and stuff this was a rig I thought I invented obviously I didn't invent it but it's about as simple as can be we're gonna fish it a little different than I did back then, but it's a fun, high percentage way to hook up with fish no matter where you're fishing. There we go. <laughs> Man, look at these things. They never ever give up. This is just a little dude. Easy. Easy. This is just a little dude. But that's what makes these fish so awesome. And a major reason why everybody wants to catch them. They never ever give up. Come here. Get that little dude. And when I said this is a technique that you get him unhooked. That little dude right there. Line all wrapped up. Little chunk. Let him go. When I said this was a technique that, you know, literally when I first got into fishing, you know, really started experimenting with new techniques and stuff like that. The first kind of technique that I really come up with was split shot, you know, and I really at the time, I bet you I thought I invented it. But this is just a version of split shot and using a tungsten worm weight, a little bobber stopper, and that pit boss. And as you can see, they are eating it. It's the same theory. When you throw a split shot bait, it's a lot different. You might wonder, why are you not throwing a drop shot? Well, a drop shot, that bait works a lot different because it's connected to the line. This 
that bait will actually float and look a lot more natural in the water. This segment is brought to you by Abu Garcia for life. Try to horse them in, but basically, most effective way I find is just let them have their way until they're done. <laughs> Let's go to a commercial break. Maybe I'll land it by the time we're back. Look at that chunk right there. Oh, awesome, awesome. Look at on the side of that fish. One of the cool things you can see there, you see scrape marks, and that's a, you know, a telltale sign that these things are digging in the rocks and burying around. Man, that is an awesome, awesome fish. You know, I'll show you another advantage to this that I think over, you know, a standard split shot. You see where that weight ended up being at the end of that fight, you know. With that bobber stopper, it's free to move around and when you get pressure on it, generally it comes down here. That gives the fish a lot less leverage if the weight is down here. If you've got that big weight floating around, it gives it something to pull out and get loose. And uh, that's just one simple advantage over just going straight up split shot. One, two. <laughs> Man, look at this fish. Oh, yes. How awesome is that? That's what makes smallmouth one of the coolest fish on the planet, man. Man, this little bait. They are munching it. And really, like I said, this is uh, basically one of the first techniques I honestly thought I designed <laughs> at the time with just a few little improvements. One thing that doesn't change is just like when I was a little kid, they munch it. Man, the reason that this technique is so effective is when you look right here, you've got that woo bobber stopper right there and a tungsten weight. But this bait floats freely. So if you're throwing a drop shot or some of those things, I mean, it's on a tight line and there's 
never any of that float factor. So if you can imagine this, as it creeps along the bottom, I mean, you bang along, you've got a lot of contact with that tungsten, you can feel everything. But this bait's got that slow, subtle float. And fish just come up behind it and inhale it. The rods in today's episode were threaded using the RTD rod threading device. Easy, dude. The small jaw power hour with the simplest, easiest way. You know, one of the simplest, easiest, most, you know, simplest ways to fish. I mean, just like the old split shot rig, but replacing it with that tungsten weight. And I mean, when I first started doing this, it wasn't always with soft plastic like this. I mean, when I first got into it, I think I'd put night crawlers and all sorts of crap on there because it would just give them that natural action. And it's the exact same thing. Just a little bit more modern day. size of this fish right here. Oh, <laughs> Man, that's a big fish. And they fall for that, you know, that weightless approach. I just sauntered down in front of them. Tasty little treat that nobody can resist. Oh, look at that fish right there. I hate that little pit boss, but it's it's this that makes the action so much. You know, if you have that bait, you know, the weight connected to it, it's gonna have action. It's not gonna have that slow glide fall that is driving these small jaw crazy. If you ask me, one of the biggest keys with this technique as well, is that tungsten weight. I mean, it just really is incredible. If all you've ever fished with is lead and you switch to tungsten, I mean, it's basically, you know, similar to fishing monofilament line or fishing braided line. It just gives you so much more contact. Tungsten is a much harder metal. So the harder the metal, the more the impact. And the more the impact, the more you're gonna be able to feel. I'm telling you, switching up to tungsten weights is really, one of the smartest things you can do because the more you can feel your bait, the more you can feel fish, and in turn, the more fish you're gonna catch. Oh man! A big one! <laughs> See this fish, the same deal. You know, that sinker, that bullet weight sinker doesn't get stuck like a, a split shot does, and it doesn't work against you loosening that hook. Don't get stuck thinking that this is just a technique for throwing at targets. Like I said, it's incredibly effective at covering ground. I mean, you look at this big, big flat we're covering here right now. I mean, this is a big bowl shaped, I mean, fairly featureless flat. And these fish kind of roam all over here. It goes from, you know, a foot of water to five or six feet of water. What I'll do is I'll cast that bait out there and just slowly start picking it apart, fan casting it. Cause there's really generally not one area that these fish are gonna sit here. 
So just like you fish a spinner bait or something like that, think about it like that, you know, fairly steady retrieves, just cast it out and fan cast that area and make sure you've covered the entire bay by the time you get through here. This week's episode was filmed at Beauchene Wilderness Lodge. To book your trip, visit Beauchene.com. This segment is brought to you by Hook Performance Fishing. thing I mean how sexy is that wow One of the coolest things and one of the things I just truly love about this technique is just the ability to fish it when you're target oriented fishing or fish it when you're, you know, covering water. Whether you're running a shoreline or fishing a big flat like this, it's just one of those baits you can pop along, but it still has that subtle, slow falling motion. All the trick is, is peg that weight just a little bit ahead of it let that bad boy float and let the fish do what they're naturally meant to do. And for those of you who haven't watched this show before, that is munch, munch. I'm telling you, I might not have a bass. I've got an alternate species. If I got a bass, I got a giant. Oh, man. <laughs> wow, wow, look at that fish right there. Oh, man. <laughs> Man, listen to that drag sing. That is awesome. I got this fish luckily hooked perfect right in the corner of his yap, which is exactly where you need to hook him. If you want to land one of these bad boys on spinning gear like this. Oh man! The whole key with these gators is you can land them, I mean, two things, being lucky, hooking them right in the corner of the mouth like this dude is, and the other thing, whew, is when you commit, you have to commit, you have to make that move. Ugh. Don't mess around with them. I mean, a lot of times people get scared and worried and, you know, they kind of just kind of commit. It's all about mega commitment with these bad boys. Ugh. And there he goes. Just sauntering away. I knew he had one last kick in him. Mm, man, 
wasn't the target species, but pretty entertaining. When I talk about this bait being a transmission bait, here's simply what I mean. I cast that bait out there up along the shore and I'm dragging it back. And as I drag it along, right in that rod tip, just because that tungsten's so dense and when I drag it along the bottom, I can feel that doom, 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 doom. Every single cast you make, you should learn something. Whether it's, you know, everybody wants to catch a fish. It's just not that simple to always catch them. And that's a really good excuse, you know, because that way, like if somebody says to you, hey, did you catch any today? And you didn't. I mean, then you could just say, well, I was just learning about my particular body of water, you know. And that's kind of what I tell people. And then I post a picture of the sunsets on the Insta space and blow up the socials. That's how you make a living fish. Day fished for eight hours, made 323 casts, and caught 18 fish. That's it for the score. Now time for the facts. Dave caught all his fish on a Berkeley Powerbait Pit Boss Jr. rigged on a Trocar TK120 Magworm hook with a Wu Tungsten quarter ounce worm weight held a few inches above the hook by a bobber stopper. Thrown with an Abu Garcia Fantastista Premier spinning rod, paired with an Abu Garcia MGX spinning reel, spooled up with six pound test Berkeley X5 braided line with a fluorocarbon leader. And that's the facts.